Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello, welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And we are doing a follow-up episode uh, from our previous episode, and this one is about professional sewing machine service. Sewing right. machine repair and service. This is where service. you don't take it apart and have extra parts left over. That's right. The good good seg- segue you from like your, that. your cliffhanger. I'm segueing. We'll try not to go off on too much of a tangent at the beginning of this one. So this is my tangent. You get to have the tangent on okay, the next one. I just one. want to explain something. That yeah. segue isn't always one of those little motor things that people stand on to get around. Okay. Segue has another meaning, too. Okay. Just so everybody I knows. I think they're spelled differently. I don't know if they are. The brand name is not spelled but, in but the But we same didn't way. spell it, so nobody knows which okay. word we're using. <laughs> well, what I'd like to ask you to do if you're enjoying the podcast and you listen to us through iTunes. Oh, that's not what it's called anymore. Apple Podcasts. Excuse me. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, I'll get in trouble. Well, and by the time somebody listens to it, it may be called something else. That's right. So if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, if you could please rate and review us, it is very helpful to our show. And it's free for you to do. What you have to do is go to the search function of your Apple Podcasts app, search for the podcast, and it'll show up. And you're like, what do I do now? What you have to do is scroll down a little bit, and then you'll see a spot with stars. And you can give us stars, and you can give us a review, and you might have to log in again with your Apple ID. And I know it's not easy, but it's so helpful. So if you're looking for a way to support the podcast that only takes you a minute or two, that's something that you can do. Okay, well, let's move on to professional sewing machine repair, Mom. Okay. So we used to own a sewing machine dealership, right? We did. We did. We don't anymore. It's been one year, exactly. Oh, wow. Like one day, one year, two days ago, or yeah, three some, days ago. Something like yeah. that. It was April Fool's Day. That's right. We became April Fool's instead of sewing machine owners, That's or sewing right. machine dealers. Dealers. So I think that our lease is actually up like March 31st, right. but our landlord let us like have the weekend to clean Well, we or got something. April Fool's Day to clean because we were fools, and it was on a Sunday, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So it was very kind to us. Right. Uh, so... um. We used to have a sewing machine repair department like area in our store, right? We called it service. Yeah, the service, the service center. But and we were given service all over that place. Let me that's tell what, you, all service, kinds of service, service everywhere. That's right, service coming out our eyeballs. Um, <laughs> no joke. <laughs> so our tech would sit. It, it was in the back, our like the back. I don't know, quarter of the store, third of the store. Yeah, it was a lot. Had a wall because we had a lot. We did a lot of service. So there was. He had his own little area with a window to the outside, outside like you know. And we floor weren't sure shop. how often the window made us or the tech happy, and how often it made us or the tech sad. And it did because, both. <laughs> because sometimes maybe the tech didn't want someone to know he was there well, okay <laughs> number one the tech has been trained okay so let's talk I, well j- yeah just hop in okay it. okay and he has had he or at least he should have been trained let's he put it this she. way our tech was a he. Our, right except i would work on machines and mallory would work on machines yeah but okay a a real tech in a dealership especially if it has a um manufacturer's you know what should I say? Endorsement. They have a dealership um, contract, contract, right, yeah. with the sewing machine company, and it says they must have a trained tech, okay, on their premises, and this means trained in that specific machine, right? Actually, so like we were baby lock, baby lock dealers, and we had been other dealers too. We had been a multi dealer at one time. But we were baby like dealers, and our contract said we had to have a, and it meant trained by them. Right. You know, so that now our tech was trained on multiple machines. Okay. Yes. You know, he had gone to other trainings and he had been trained by our former tech and things like that. And it cost me a lot of money to get him trained. I want you to know that. <laughs> Okay, it they you just don't pick someone off the street and all of a sudden you have a servants department. That's right. It costs money, and and time and energy. There's a lot of investment, and a lot of people want their machine to stay in the store they bring it to 
understandably, that's not always the case for every uh, service center right. you go to. But it was the case for it us. It was for us. We did not transport machines out. And that meant that we were paying rent on, on that, that space. space. So this all, I guess... It also we, meant we didn't make any money well, on uh, service. So before we get into that kind of like bitch fest, right? I just This is all precluding when someone says, I don't think the service should cost this much. Or, the, or someone says, I want to go back to the tech and ask him how to fix my machine. Right. Okay? No. <laughs> Do you go in and ask your doctor how to take your kidney out? No, he went to school. He paid for it. He put in his time. He has an expertise. Don't do that. Well, also, it's not nice. We would tell people what they needed to know. We for we get, to use their machine. We told we gave people a lot of free service. And we also, you know, a lot of times we could catch things. We couldn't right. catch it all the time. No, we didn't always have the time. If there were a bunch of customers in the store, I couldn't troubleshoot someone's machine at the counter. Right. You know, but if I had time, I'd try to do it, you know. Um, but, yeah, you can't go and say, hey, can you tell me how to time this machine? And you want him to take an hour of his time to teach you and make right. sure you know how to do it or right. something. That's inappropriate to ask. It's, it's not, totally inappropriate. Yeah. You no. don't go in and ask a mechanic, you know. Show how me do, how to Show me how to car. do this on my machine. Now, I did, I remember telling someone one time that he that the tech would probably be happy for $2,000 to <laughs> show them how to time their machine. I mean, it was it was almost ridiculous. And, you know, for free, tell me how many times you go to work and you say to your boss or whoever signs your paycheck, hey, I'm just going to work for you free today. Right. No. No. Think about that. It's his job. Also, the tech would be there in the window, and he'd be working on something, right? Right. He had, like, things to do. Right. <laughs> so you can't always stop and drop it. And I want to talk about wait times. And our tech did talk to people, and after he went through their machine and everything, yeah. oftentimes if it was something that's kind of quirky or unusual, he would call them up, and he would tell them. And we also had a form that he filled out mm-hmm. that stayed in a record, on our computer, you got it, we got it, he got it, that told you what he found in with, you know, in or about or whatever. So you had information about your machine. I think that we ran a pretty good service department over there. We didn't get a lot of complaints. No. The one thing that people would sometimes complain about was the turnaround time. Yeah. And so I want to talk about turnaround time a little bit. Uh a few people, this this series of podcasts, these two podcasts came from a post about right. someone asking about this. And a few people were like, you know, I want to get mine serviced, but it's going to take two weeks. Yeah. Or something like that. Right. And I, I can't give up my machine for that long right. or something. And I, I understand that. But, you know, generally, we would tell someone that their estimated turnaround date was two weeks. Right. Now. We under-promised. Th- and over delivered. Sometimes it would get finished faster, but when someone would say, "Why are you telling me this?" Okay, mm-hmm. uh, or "Why is it two weeks?" or "That's ridiculous," or something. Well, first of all, you can't lie to people and say it's going to be ready before it would be. Right. You know. Okay. And why we would get backed up is we serviced machines for theaters for, for the schools, world. Yes. For people who had six machines, and they would plan. And this is what you should do. When you go on vacation or when you know you can take a break, they would bring in all two, six, you know. Whatever machines, yeah. Twelve machines, and those would be in line first, and that's how we did them. We did them by order right. of And oftentimes intake. in the summer we would have school machines, so somebody could bring thir- us 30 machines in Literally. one day. Literally. Now, school- we had three months to get them fixed, thank goodness. <laughs> and and yes. we would try to do that. But when you think about turnaround time, a sewing machine tech, okay, we just talked about how it's not really big money, right? A sewing machine tech will be working on their own oftentimes. Maybe uh, there's only one tech. Uh, and they're often, yes. Okay. It's not like a Jiffy Lube. No. Okay. And what, it, okay, if you bring your car into a Jiffy Lube and it can't get everything fixed in 30 minutes... They it tell doesn't you, get fixed. No, they tell right? you to go someplace else. Yeah, they say, hey, go someplace yeah. else. So, oh, we can't get out your oil plug, but we're not going to fix you. That's right. Yeah. So that's not what we were doing. So turnaround time, I think it can be longer than some people expect. But 
That's why I think that happens right. in our industry. And what we did find out, because the best thing about um, having conventions and meetings with dealers is you got to talk to other dealers. Sure. From other areas, from your own area, whatever. But what we found out is two weeks was more than reasonable. Okay. It seems many to be. people were a month out, and oftentimes our tech would turn a machine around in a week. Yep. And, All, and people would say, Well, I want to make an appointment so I can just come in and you can fix it while I wait. Doesn't work that way. It can't always happen. It just, it just really usually does not work that way. Um, first of all, somebody's been there before you. Right. Okay. There are machines in a line. Now, we did have rush fees. So yeah. if you were desperate, you could pay a premium and, you know, he might stay over. You know, well, and that's what you're paying for, right? You're paying, you're paying for, for his, his time. time. You're, you're, you're know, paying, paying for, for his time. time. That's the text time. And whatever his premium is to, to do that, you know, if you're willing to pay that, my suggestion is have a backup machine. Like if, if you say, I cannot live without my sewing machine. Well, that would be similar to like, I can't live without my iron lung. Or my car. Yeah, I would have you a backup. Well, I'd have a backup iron lung yes. if I cannot live without my sewing machine. Now, you might say, oh, that would be in a dealer's interest, wouldn't it, to tell you to have a backup well, machine? it doesn't have to be. Well, well okay. You we're could not, have a, we're right. not dealers anymore. We're not dealers saying. anymore. Yeah. We're, we're sewing people. Yes. So, we, we have like six backup machines. Yes, we have backup machines. It's um, a good idea. Right. But plan, I think so, it's. A bit of planning is good. Well, yeah, and what I was going to say when I say a backup machine, so oftentimes when someone would come to trade a machine in, I would mention that to them. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're an avid sewer. I know you want to trade this in. You know, a trade in, you never get what you want. Sure. Okay? I mean, everybody always wants more than they get. But, you know, depending on the, the type of machine or whatever, I would say, do you want to keep it for a backup? backup machine or sometimes i would say there's this other small machine and we can work a deal mm -hmm. where you can have this little backup machine that doesn't weigh a lot that you can take to retreats with you and not blah 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 so backup yeah. machine backup machine can be good so we so turnaround time that can be a b for a complaint that's why it happens yeah the process we kind of started talking about our take-in process mm -hmm. so when you bring your machine in you need to bring the power cord and the and power pedal. That's power the pedal. thing that's on the floor that makes it go. Okay. You should bring a presser foot that allows your machine to do a, like zigzag. a zigzag. You know, it allows the needle to swing, right? You should bring your bobbin case and your bobbin and your that bobbin. you are using. Okay. These are the things you need to bring in so that we could make sure that everything was working properly. If you, you have an embroidery unit, yeah, you bring that unit and you bring a frame, the the hoop that fits on that embroidery unit. Because we'll talk about this later in the process about testing, right? Right. So we check everything in. We try to make sure there's a list of accessories. We wrote down the machine serial number. We did so that we could make sure that it was the right machine. That's right. We have a couple funny stories about that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> And everything got tagged. Everything got tagged. Names on everything. Okay. If we couldn't figure out how to get on there, you know, it went on there with a piece of tape. Painter's tape. Painter's tape. tape yeah. You know, but we did have, and we had a little pocket that, you know, got attached to your machine that all this information went in. This thing was filled out and you got a copy of it. That's right. And well, we got a copy and you got a copy. And that's why it's important to remember, like, it's like sewing machines are kind of a small part of some people's lives, but they are complex things to service and to maintain. You know, you don't just drive up in your car and drop off the keys with this. You know, it's like I've dropped off many a car to be serviced and I thought it was easier than dropping off a right. sewing machine, you know. Well, so, the car is sort of self-contained. That's right. A sewing machine has accessories. Yeah. Now, you say, well, don't you have a power cord? I have that same machine right there on, on the um, that you have on the floor. We do, and we can pull that power cord, and we can use it. But you know what? What if something's wrong with your power cord? Right. I would want it. You know, now I would want to know my power cord my stuff worked. worked. Yeah. Yes, I want to know my power pedal worked. And you say, well, my machine works without the power pedal. You yeah. Know, yes. And I guess if you never use your power pedal, mm -hmm. 
You don't care if you bring it in, but why not bring it in? Because that's included in the service to make sure that that works with your machine. That's okay? all part of it. I would want to know that it worked, and I'd want to know it was my power pedal that worked with my machine. Also, people will bring in the power pedal that goes to another machine. That's right. That happens too. <laughs> so if you're at home, you need to somehow code all of those you know, wires and pedals and gizmos and know which machine they go with. Okay. Uh, also... We would then, we would, you know, tag everything, talk to people about what was going on with their machine. And this is where we had a few options. And this was always confusing to people. And I didn't really like, uh, you know, explaining it in depth back then. But I guess I'm going to do it one more time now. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, it wasn't as difficult. Sometimes it was hard to get the, like, our employees to understand or to get communicate this, you know, uh, get this across. So people would sometimes, you know, balk at the at the clean oil and adjust fee, right? So let's say it was eighty four ninety five. I think is what it was. This was your machine gets naked in the back. It gets fully cleaned, fully oiled, retimed. Feed dog height would be recalibrated. Um, a you know, new needle. A new needle. It, everything would get cleaned and, you know, make sure that all the stitches are working properly, you know. So I think we – did we have some different fees for, like, mechanical versus computerized at one point? And then I think we, like, stopped doing I that. I think we stopped doing that because, really, it took the same, took amount, the same of amount of time to take we, the machine we, apart. We, we decided that time – you know, what time is the – now – Big machines, like single-head, multi-needle embroidery machines, mm-hmm. had a different price. That's right. But think about – I mean, I we thought about it, mm-hmm. and I think most people do when they price this, was in terms of tech time. It's and definitely tech, time. Di- and tech yeah. difficulty. And another thing even about the big machines is it would take Space. two of us to move it. Oh, yeah. You know, if he wanted it moved to a bench or wanted it moved out of the way, he'd have to wait for us. Uh, you know, oh, you know, can you get on the side of this? So while much I, fun so, to yeah. move that stuff while well, you're pregnant. And we, used to have, <laughs> and we used to have to move that stuff out of people's cars. Yeah. Now, a lot of people – this is another thing, and most sewing machine uh, – dealers will do this for you like you could not park right in front of our store it was like a roadway a wet not a roadway but Sidewalk. a drive well well it was a driveway away because the cars oh, drove oh, in I'm front sorry. of the shop yes, I'm you know so- there was I not understand. in our in the last specific place we had you yeah. couldn't pull right to the sidewalk mm-hmm. the ones before that you the two before that you could but the last one you know was like the through affair yeah and then the parking started we would tell people you know if you come you can pull up you know, walk in the door and say, hey, I've got a machine out here, and we will help you. Right. Yeah, it was amazing who asked us to carry in machines when – that was always kind of a shocker. Well, like, and you never yeah. know what's going on with you somebody. Know, somebody. Yeah, somebody definitely could have a health issue okay. or a back issue. And but, sometimes – But sometimes they, there was, like, somebody that was six foot four that looked real muscular, yeah. you know, <laughs> that was out, like, while you were carrying the machine and opened the hood of their car and started working mm-hmm. on it, and I'd go – Oh, well, okay, yeah. you never know what's going on right. with somebody. Try not to judge. It's also, though, some people I could judge and say, you needed to ask me because you're about to stroke out. Like, Well, you, yeah, we would know? have people come in that we thought were going to die. No, I, yes. I had to sit someone down in a chair yep. and I said, That's please, happened please before. do not carry this in. Like, I mean, this was like a medical emergency anyway so and Mallory will tell you I get really mad when I have to call 911 in the middle of a work day it's right. really really <laughs> interrupts uh, so um, especially at a club day that's right <laughs> it, it just cramps our style so uh we you know bringing that machine in and talking about the service that's what we were about to talk about right. we had something called a bench charge or a what do we call it? no um estimate what, oh it was called something I just lost it was it a bench? We called it a bench charge. Is that what we called no, it? No, that's form? not what it was called. It was called something else, and I can't remember what okay. it was called. Um, but you could get this like service estimate. So this was for the people with the you know machine from the garage sale right. or the machine of unknown origin, right. or you didn't know when the last time it had been serviced. And people were like, I just want to know how much it is to get cleaned. Right. This was, I think, forty five dollars. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if you know, our tech put it on the bench and took it all apart to give you this estimate. He'd done almost half right. the service, right. you know, our tech had. So then he'd say, hey, I think it'll be good with a clean oil adjust or it'll be good right. with a COA and a $50 part, $10 part, right. da 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 
What we would then do is if you wanted to go ahead and get it serviced, we'd waive that. Yeah, we waived that bench charge. And then you just had to pay for the service. So it wasn't like bench charge on top of, you know, things. But I think when people, well, when I say people got confused, I don't think they were confused. I think they were ticked that they were going to get charged and perhaps the machine would not be working when they left. So if the tech got in there and said, hey, this old machine that has a metal housing but has all these crumbling nylon gears would cost hundreds of dollars to fix – People wouldn't like that. I wish I could have, like, we we need to take a picture of your face and written crumbling nylon the gears vein, underneath it. Yeah. The vein. Um, In that all metal machine. Uh, the vein right. popping out of my neck right, right there. Right, right. Uh, so the people would be like, oh, I have to pay $45 and it's not fixed. And it's like, well, yeah, that yeah. is. But I only the... paid 20 for it at the garage sale. Right. Again, I was, was not, not there. there to help you make that decision. That's like when that lady brought me a washcloth to embroider, and I told her it would be $8 to embroider. And she said, I only paid $4 for the washcloth. And I was like, well, yes, now it'll and be a $12 they, and, and, washcloth. And the embroidery cost $8. I was just like, I don't know and what to say. And the embroidery cost $8. I don't know what to say to you. And the embroidery you know? cost $8. Yeah. So uh, anyway, um, that – that service charge, that bench charge, right. was something that we could do to get an estimate. Right. So if, if the dealer has that, that's why. Because maybe maybe you can't complete that clean oil adjust if you're a tech. Right. You know, and we would kind of say, this would be the minimum that you'd get charged if things were iffy. Right. We'd always interview people about the machine. Well, you know? and you know, I, I mean... Everybody runs their business differently, mm-hmm. and there are different reasons, and please ask. You know, yeah. if you don't understand and you're getting mad about a charge or something that wasn't done, you need to say, in a nice, nice <laughs> way, you know, could you explain this to me? I just don't understand. You know, don't don't be don't intimidate somebody because well, of the way they're trying to run their business till you find out how they're doing it. We're coming at this from the dealer yeah. perspective. We of course think that we were doing well, everything that we could. And I do want to give a disclaimer because this comes up every time we do well, a podcast like this, is that some people are like, I ran into a business and it was not run nicely. And that happens too. That's why I say start out nice. You can get mean later. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess here's the other thing I was going to say. Oftentimes, if Mallory and I could not bench check the machine before it went in, like uh-huh. out front, because we were the ones that looked at it and sort of decided what it needed and described the problem and you know, the tech got that piece of paper. Sometimes we were busy and we weren't checking it in. Okay. Right. And sometimes even one of our clerical people would have to check it in if right. we were really busy and it was that the needle was in backwards or sure. it you know or not and our tech might find that and not charge you at all in fact now <laughs> not every business will do that no okay or he'd say i'm just putting ten dollars on it it you know i was busy it took my time i'm putting ten and that was usually you know that charge was often up to him our tech was an independent contractor right Okay, so he made the money off of his service, not now, us. We, I think we maybe even had a tech who sometimes should have charged for things yeah, he didn't charge for. Sometimes we would even say, why are you not charging more? Because that took your time. Right. Yes. Now, this was up to him, like right. you said, independent contractor. Right. But if we could find, if, if he found, oh my gosh, it was just that this thing wasn't plugged in right. right or that, the, yes. It's needle, the wrong cord, you know. Needle in backwards, right. <laughs> something like that. And the machine looked clean. Right. He would often not charge. If he didn't have a recommendation farther yeah. than it, she needs to learn, please sit down. Or he would say, you need to sit down with Zeta or Mallory so they can show you how to put the needle right, in. Right, right. You know, or he would recommend when you pick your, you know, he would, he would call them or email them and say, when you come in, someone needs to show you how to change your needle. Right. You know, right. and sometimes he would not charge for that at all. What I'm saying is he's got a right to. Yeah. He has a right to, and that's what I meant about, you know, um, and everybody runs their business differently. Um, Sometimes we were into too much goodwill, I think. But, you know... It's a balance. If act. he if he charges ten dollars, he has a right to because he could have made money on a machine that really needed service with that time right. he took to you know fool around with your machine. That's right. So and time, I mean, that's what we are all trading on. You're you're buying his expertise. Right. Nothing else. Right. The parts are different. Oh, and I just real quick disclaimer here before we take a break. Our tech was a he. We keep saying he. Yeah. But we have a really good story about a tech. 
who was a she, right? Yes. At a dealership. We were, we were actually still pretty good friends with this um, this dealership owner. Right. I won't say her name. Uh, she's retired now. She's retired. Congratulations. Uh, but she had a partner who was her tech, right? Like her business partner was her tech. Weren't, weren't they partners? No, in the business? no. Oh, she, she's a, she was, she was, she was a, I think she was an independent contractor. Oh, okay. okay. But they were really good friends, too. They were really good friends. We knew her very well, too. And people would come in and make the assumption, of course, right, that the, the tech was, was a man. Right. So they'd say, hey, I want to talk to the man who fixes machines, that's you right. know. And, and, of course, it's a woman, so that's who they get to talk to. And so as a gag gift one year, um, oh, <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. The, the dealer <clears throat> uh, got the tech an apron with well, let, let's just simplify the story. Okay? Oh no, I want to tell the better part of the, the better, story. Okay, go ahead. go ahead. Well, the dealer found in her mother's stuff while she was she had had to put her mother in a you know care facility. Yeah, so she's cleaning out her mother's stuff. And this mother would have been like this woman's your age, and so her mother would have. Oh been, no, her mother was well into her age. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, so she finds an so apron. So probably born in like 1925. There you go. Yeah. She finds an apron with. Two the, aprons. Two a- Oh, oh there right. There was a set. A set with the. Uh, Genitalia. An- anatomies. <laughs> anatomies depicted very clearly on them. Right. It was a photograph, right? Right. Okay. No, 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 no. It was like stuffed. It was like an applique. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. Yes. It, oh. it, it moved around and you could touch it. Oh, my. <laughs> She finds and, these... and, and it had hair and things. Oh my! <laughs> she finds these things in the attic, and so she gave she gave the one with uh, the, the male genitalia, male genitalia to um, to her tech. To her tech, and she said that you should wear this when they ask for the man who services the sewing. <laughs> That's team. right. So this is just a funny real life. We story. had a picture of it at one time. Funny real life story <laughs> that that happened in our world. Okay, let's right. take a little break here. Everybody, it's Mallory here in your message break, and I just want to make an announcement or a disclaimer or whatever we're supposed to call it that we are going to start using affiliate links as a, a way to get support for the podcast and for our website and everything like that. Uh, Mom, do you know what an affiliate link is? <laughs> okay, she's affiliating me with something and I have no idea what this is about. Yeah, I totally like used, you know, our, our tax ID number to, yeah. you know, da, da. so what an affiliate link is. I'm going to wind up like in jail and not know what I'm being charged with. Is yeah, that prob- right? Probably. Okay. Uh, no, because we're disclaiming it right now. Oh, so okay. <laughs> affiliate links. I'll just need a lawyer. I yes. won't go to jail. Yes, okay. Yes. And we'll make money from the affiliate links to pay for the lawyer. <laughs> So Zidi's going to need to keep her butt out of jail. No, we're doing it all right. Okay, so here's the deal. Affiliate links are links that we post uh, that maybe to Amazon or or to other products or on other platforms. And when you click through and you buy things on Amazon or, or you subscribe to something, you know, that we're an affiliate for, we get a kickback. Okay. Oh, we make money? Yeah, we make a little bit of money. And what's really cool about the Amazon thing is uh, you know, you make we make the kickback on on everything you buy. <laughs> so, uh So if they buy a refrigerator, I can make I can make money on it. That is correct. Hey everybody, buy a refrigerator. No, we're not. Okay, so th- that's something we're not supposed to do, right? Oh, we're not supposed to, I, that's, so now I am going to wind up in yes. jail. So the terms of service, though, I just want to let you all know is that we have to disclaim like, "Hey, we're an affiliate for this or this, you know, when we share this tracing paper from Amazon that has free shipping, this is an affiliate link. You need to know that I am not just innocently recommending this. Uh, and we will get a kickback on that. So you're going to see some of those in the group. It's never going to be uh, crap that we don't I was going to say, like. even though we could endorse crap. We won't. We're not going. We're actually going to maintain our ethics. <laughs> yes. Okay. And we're going to find you things at places that ship fast. Uh, we're going to recommend products that we really enjoy using. If you've ever ordered something from us, you may have noticed that Mallory is not the most organized uh, shipper and packer. So we are going to play to our strengths and really focus on creating the podcasts, the videos, the online classes, and allow other businesses that are really good at shipping things <laughs> to ship things to you. So just be aware that we will be using those affiliate links 
Uh, there are lots of ways to let you know. I can just say this is an affiliate link or sometimes people use hashtags and I've been getting really creative and using and it's been a lot of fun already in the group. So uh, just heads up, we're going to be doing that. And if you click on an affiliate link, know that if you purchase something, you'll be supporting SoHere.com. And we so appreciate it. Good idea, Mal. So, 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 sewing out loud. All right, the tech gets the machine back uh, or wherever. Like we said, ours stayed. Our machine stayed. Right, ours stayed on the premises. And you can ask them that. Does my machine stay on the premises? And some have a mix of that. Yep. Some of them, you know, if they're a, a dealership, those specific machines they sell may stay on the premises. But if they service other machines that are not the ones that they sell, those may go um, somewhere. Off, right. They may go off campus and to someplace I'll just else. Say, I, it, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's hard to find a tech. It's hard to be a sewing machine dealer, okay? Uh, there are lots of challenges. It's not I've like... I've never met a rich sewing machine dealer. <laughs> I, there's one who owns, like, all of them in the tri-state oh, well, area, that's true. right? Um, but uh, there's... That's difficult, okay? When you find somebody who wants to be a sewing machine tech, you're like, oh, great, you know? So, I don't know. if they If the machine has to leave... It might not be because, you know, like the dealer wants to right. inconvenience you or something. It might be their only option. They might not even have the square footage. All those things. There's, there's right. lots of things. But you can ask that. Is my machine going to stay here or leave? If it does leave, you say, how do you track that? Yep. There you, you go. Know, how do you keep track of my machine? Mm -hmm. Now, we were, I thought pretty good about that we showed them how we labeled the machine right in front of them right we put down serial numbers we listed what was with them and what wasn't with them if there was something that was with it um that we didn't need to look we tried to send it back home with them yes yes um some dealerships do not want big carrying cases mm -hmm. with the machines because there's no place to put them another thing is if you have a machine and a piece of furniture and it's an old type machine that is bolted into that piece of furniture. They don't want the furniture. And you can take it out. And it does come now, out. I am having and, a... <laughs> and if you say, no, it doesn't, I will tell you, yes, it does. Okay, I'm having a flashback to saying that on the podcast. I hope we haven't done this podcast before. Uh, but I would show people how to take that out. We might, we might have said that before. I know. I just hope we haven't done this before. <laughs> okay, so... The oh, my tech. gosh. If we're making, like, a podcast, we can't use. I'm going to shoot myself. Go ahead. <laughs> the tech gets... The tech gets to gets the machine to their workspace or whatever, and they start to uh, clean it. And please don't bring a machine somewhere that has like dog urine on it, yes. or or like cat vomit, or, or any type of feces, including roach feces. Like, yeah, anything, any waste product. You can wipe that off. You can off. wipe your machine off. <laughs> yes, I I I think that. That made me sad. I was, I, it made me sad and angry when someone would come in the store and put a machine up on the counter and say, And well, they would the, tell you, oh, say, my dog peed on this. And my you dog could tell it wasn't wiped on this. And I'd say, then you need to please put that on the floor. Right. And, you know, no, that is not nice. I did actually one time have someone take the machine back outside and, and I gave, gave, I gave her a rag and some, uh, yeah. Windex and said, "You need to wipe this off. I cannot ask my tech to touch this. That's not nice. And I don't, I don't want somebody else's feces like in my store. No, and we're not exaggerating. And I'm telling you guys, you know. we would get machines and we would like, you know, lift up the power pedal and roaches would crawl out. It could happen. It's creepy. It could happen. Uh, so it didn't happen all the time, but that's not nice. Okay, don't do that to people. I bet those people are not listening. <laughs> No, probably not. Okay, so if we have repeated this podcast, this happens to be version 2018. That's right. That's right. So the casing, the, okay, I'm saying casing, you say housing. I'm sorry. Uh, the housing needs to be cleaned. Right. And a lot of times it's really nice to do that <clears throat> when it's off the machine. Okay, right. so a, a tech will be cleaning that housing inside and out, uh, keeping all the screws and everything together, getting it completely naked, and cleaning it first before oiling it, right? That's right. Checking to see if there's rust or any other damage. There are things that a tech can see uh, right away. And I know that there are people who I've thought were pretty familiar with their machines. And I could open up just even part of it and say, oh, look at this. Right. You know, did you 
you know, there's a hole in your bobbin case. Right. Like the the tech and I could see things like that. You could see things like that. Um, and then you start to put the machine back together, right? That's right. And then you test it. That's right. And you, the tech will test the machine. This is where you can give some information at the check-in point too. You can say I was sewing on this with this thread, mm-hmm. right? And it wasn't working, right. or or it jammed up, or something like that. Or if you bring your machine in and say it never works with metallic thread, I want it to work. You better bring that thread. Bring that thread. That thread. That bring thread. exactly what you were using with exactly the needle you were using. And our tech was a prolific tester, and he also was a sewer. He was, and he would test on lots of things. Mm-hmm. And he would say, hey, what kind of metallic threads do you have out there? Right. You know, what can you give me? Or something like that. And I'd give him things to test on. But it is kind of impossible to test every single right. possibility. Bring the one you're – you can bring the fabric. You can bring the thread. You bring the needle. You bring the situation that you want. <laughs> the situation. Want, the situation <laughs> that you want to, to be dealt with. Um, and there were some times he would say to someone – I don't think this machine is really going to do this for you. Yeah, that's possible. You know, and he said, this is as good as I can get it to work. It does, all, you know, it does um, things one through nine, but it's not going to do number 10. That's quite possible. That's a very good, that's a very good point. And I thought that, um, I thought he was pretty good about that. He was. someone in the group posted about a not so satisfactory repair experience and they said that the technician did not test, did not show them a zigzag on their machine. Mm-hmm. We always gave out a test strip um, <laughs> that had stitches right. on it. Okay. Uh, it was a woven. It would show balance, you know. And so what usually you would get was a straight stitch, a zigzag stitch, and sometimes a satin stitch. And like a couple of decorative right. stitches right. or something like that. So... That and is, if it was a stitch you would specifically ask about, that would be on there. Uh, maybe, and embroidery, maybe a buttonhole sometimes. Uh-huh, and, yeah, sometimes a buttonhole. And um, if it was an embroidery unit, you know, you would get an embroidery sample. That's right. Um, so we, you'd get all those samples, and that was going to show you, hey, you know, the machine was – you know, right. doing this. So right. I think that is an important part. Now, I did – there were, like, two instances <laughs> – or someone like accused us. They said this sample wasn't made on my machine. Yeah. What <laughs> machine did you make this on? My machines never look this good. And we're like, so what? What we would do is we would take the machine over to the classroom and we would say, okay, let's go over there and see if it does this. Now you would think that would make most people happy. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes it, it didn't. Sometimes it did. Sometimes yeah, it didn't. Sometimes they were mad, and sometimes they told us they knew how to sew, mm-hmm. and they weren't going to sit down with us. So everybody's different. No, and so I will say, sometimes people would be like, "Oh my gosh, this has never looked this good. Right. I'm so pleased." Right. You Most know? of the time, everybody was happy. I mean, yes, it was just those ones that would stick out. Like, but I just thought that. when when someone. Uh, someone accused us one time of not actually testing their serger because he didn't leave it threaded or something. And I thought, why would you – I got – it was no, I, we, we always and... – no, no. We always left it threaded. We didn't leave the thread cones on. So they wanted us to give them new thread, I guess, I guess yeah, with their service. Because just... we always left it – he always left it threaded. But, the you know, he would well, tie it know. off. I don't right, know what right, happened right, right, in this right, particular right, situation. Right. But I just thought, man, you know, if some store is going through the trouble of, like, really trying to rip people off like that, I hope it doesn't last long. I was you, know, say, I, 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 man. you know, that takes a lot of trouble. <laughs> So well, no, I trouble. guess it wouldn't take a lot of trouble well, to just, not. like, give somebody their machine back. Oh, but yeah. That wasn't what we were doing, right. you know. So that's very interesting. A lot of times, I know on a serger, what he would do is he would actually leave the sample attached, attached yes. like, with the needles in. Mm-hmm. So I think that might have happened once when he was accused of doing something, like, you know, a different way. But he would leave it, like... As the stitch was in process, so you need a test, and if you so it's it's a sewing machine. You do you need a zigzag stitch if right. you if it zigzags. Absolutely, you need to see that because and a straight, then a satin stitch will show you your balance. Yeah, usually, a straight stitch won't always show you tension issues. No. You know, sometimes I think we've mentioned this before. People are like, "Oh, that older machine did the perfect straight stitch," and it's like, "Oh, that's all it did." You know? Yeah. Well, and your memory might not be as well, good as yeah, you think. Yeah, that's possible. You know. 
when I go back to my grade school, it's so much smaller than it was when I was there. <laughs> and they've added on. <laughs> now, chest stitching and test sh- stitching should not be um, a problem. No. Okay, for the tech, because I want to just bring this up. This is something you might not see. A lot of computerized machines have test programs in them for the tech. There's, And sometimes you might get a sample. That's a sample you might get back. Is that test program? Yeah, sometimes it looks like a like a circle with a triangle. I've seen nines. Yeah, all sorts um, of things. In a row, like stitched out nines. Uh, you see circles and – or um, – Triangles, is it? Or it's squares? like a circle that has a, a triangle out of it. Like right. A, like a chick, okay? Like a, <laughs> like a baby chick, okay, is, is what it looks like, or a keyhole or yeah, something. It, it, it could sometimes be one of your decorative stitches yes. that you recognize. So a technician, uh, this is something you might not know. You might never need to do this, but there are certain parts of your machine, if it's computerized, that you can't access, and you, like, hold certain buttons while you turn it on, right. and it allows the tech to access and pro- properly calibrate computerized parts of the machine to test out afterwards to say, hey, is this balance right? So right. if you're like, why am I paying for this person's time? Oh, they you know they know how to do that stuff, right? right. Um, the other thing is take your machine, if you can, to an authorized dealer. And I will add, try and take it to the same place. If you like them, if you feel, I mean, generally, you know, you like a dealer, that's a dealer you go to, you take, I mean, you develop a relationship with a, per, with a dealer, right. almost like a, a person. And why I say this is we kept track. Yeah. We knew when your machine came in, we knew what had been done to it. Right. Okay. So when you came in and said, it's the same thing that's happening, we could go back and look at that or, and we could figure out if it was the same thing or not. Right. Right. The other thing is people would come in and say, my machine's just not working right. And I had it serviced here and it hasn't worked right since, you know. <laughs> and um, anyway, we had a disclaimer that you did have to bring it back within 30 days if that was your complaint. Oh, this is a great tip. So Okay. You, yeah. Take it home and sew with it. Right. I don't care if you're making it, you know, doing something or not. But when you bring it back 18 months later and tell me, Nothing's happened to it. You know, you haven't dropped it or whatever, or blah, blah, blah. Or nobody else has sewn on it or, you know, and this is, that's really hard for me to swallow. Okay. Well, we can't. And, yeah. and, and if I honored that on everybody that said that, you know, I, you know, what am I, I I'm swallowing the cost because I already paid my, my, my tech. So don't do that. And here's the other thing. People would say, I just had this in and it's not sewing yeah. right. And we would go back. And we could look at the history, and it hadn't been in for three years sometimes. I mean, it's they weren't lying. They no. just didn't remember. And that's, or, Time flies. You know, in the meantime, their son got married, and their daughter graduated from college, right. and they went for a trip in Europe. It did seem like they had just I mean, been I there. I told Derek, I was like, Derek, we just got those tires on our car. He's like, no, that's like six years ago. I okay. swear it would like, be something that my husband would – my husband, I will say – Jerry's got that t- yeah, habit, doesn't yeah. he? <laughs> I will say we need – you know, while you're at the store, pick up some dishwashing detergent. And he goes, oh, there's a whole bunch in the garage. And I'm like, that was two years ago. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. so when when I would, when we would have staff meetings, I'm like, right. really great ideas. When you're on the phone with the customer and they're talking about sewing machine repair, just look up their history. Right. Because you can automatically right then say, oh, it hasn't been in for this right. long. Or, oh, yeah, it has only been like, right. you know, two weeks or something. And so that was really helpful. So do go home and sew on it right away. This is for your welfare, for the right. tax welfare, all that jazz. Um, the other thing about sewing on it right away is you know, okay, we we signed in what presser foot you brought, what, what power cord you brought, all these things, right? Go home. When you go home and you sew on that machine, you're also... If you haven't checked it well when you took it out, yeah, you know you got that presser foot back. You know you got um, your power cord back. You know you got those things back when you took it home. Whether you got them home or didn't get them home, calling back six months later and saying, I no longer have my power cord. It's impossible. It means nothing. Track. Yeah. Where, you know. I want to go back to the authorized dealer thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and I'll just. But stick with that authorized dealer. Yeah. I'll just, um, you know, drop the brand names here. So, you know, uh, Baby Lock is one of our sponsors. We were Baby Lock exclusive dealer. And, you know, a lot of people think they're really close to brothers, right? 
they can look very similar. Um, sometimes they license certain parts of the technology the two companies do. Right, they share technology. But we would have people who said, um, I went and got my machine serviced by a brother tech, mm -hmm. and it would come back not in good working order. Now, that's not saying something necessarily about brother. Might no. be saying something about that tech, right. you know, and, and I'm not saying it could be in a different town. It could be anywhere, but they, just because they look the same doesn't mean they're the same inside. We know this for sure. And actually, we would not service top of the line other brands. Right. We wouldn't service the super duper computerized, like, Vikings, um, Boffs, you know, uh, brothers and things Singers. like that. And people would come in and say, no, uh, brothers the same as baby lock. And we're like, nope, you get nope. in there and things are different and the parts are not always necessarily compatible. And especially the high end electronics and, yes. and computerized things, the boards are different. They are not the same, and they're you know they're patented. They they're you know they're exclusive to that company. And it might be a small difference, but a can, very small difference. Can be very important. It can actually look the same we almost had, you know on inspection. We had a customer who was away. Uh, she had her Alissimo, okay, mm -hmm. and she was away at a retreat, and she had her machine, and the dealer she was at was not a Baby Lock dealer. I don't know what dealership they were, uh -huh. um, but. Something went wrong with her machine, and she let them service it, and they did the plug in the circuit board thing Backwards. wrong. Yeah, and so she, I, I think part of her thing was like, I didn't want to wait to come home because you guys had a two week turnaround. <laughs> well, yeah, guess how long she couldn't use her machine, and yeah. and certain things were just uh, off, and then more things got messed up. Right. So that was what was wrong. It's not like you know. So that's what happens sometimes right. if you plug a circuit board in wrong. It doesn't hurt the circuit board, but the machine will mechanically work in a different way, and then it starts hurting other parts. Yeah, so if you can, keep that dealer. Now, we know that we're talking about a fantasy world where you have a dealer you love. And everything works out perfectly. Yeah, so if you do, if you – and we were just talking in the group. Someone was talking about purchasing machines and researching, mm -hmm. and they said, you know – I just, there's this one dealer who I really love. Right. And I'm really connecting with them. And I thought, then that might be. That might be it. The right dealer yeah. for you. You know. And, you know, of course, I would, I, I'll tell everybody to buy a baby lock. Right. But your dealer relationship is so important. Very important. Uh, and knowing they're there and knowing they back their product, it's very important. And if you live 400 miles from a baby lock dealer, I don't know. It might not be sustainable. I don't know if I can say that's the best product for you. It might not be sustainable, no. possibly. Especially if there's another dealer down the road. Right. You know. Well, I think we've gone into professional service and, and what we did and maybe what you can expect. Okay, let me look at my notes because I stopped looking at them to make other notes. So, but so I wrote like, something down. Well, you look. So what you can expect in terms of turnaround time, why things might cost, quote, so much. Oh, uh, oh this is wait, this is a good one. Did we miss something? If you are under warranty oh. and a non-authorized dealer opens your machine and it comes back with a circuit board where where an authorized dealer can open your machine and certainly tell that right. someone has opened it or something, uh, it could be void. Your warranty could your be warranty void. Your warranty could be void. If you open your machine and do something, it can be void. Now, here's another deal, everybody. Because you buy your machine from me and I give you another type of warranty on top of the manufacturer's warranty, right? Mm -hmm. I'm saying in our store, we extend this and we do this. We give free um, yearly service for five years mm -hmm. and say that's not associated with the baby lock company or, or whatever company right whatever yeah. company you know i said baby lock because that's what we were that doesn't go at the other baby lock dealer mm -hmm. they're all independent dealers well and just to highlight not to cause any confusion right baby lock does have extended warranties they have an ex it, it's yeah but it's associated with baby lock it has their logo on it you'll right. get a copy of it it will be explained to you there is sometimes a charge for it, or the dealer will tell you that it is included. Yep. Then you can go to any authorized Baby Lock dealer. 
but it has to be associated with baby lock. That dealer may also say, well, I will give you a birthday party every year. Mm -hmm. The day you bought your machine, I'll bring you in and we'll have cake and coffee and we'll talk about (laughs) your wonderful sewing experiences for the rest of your life because you bought your machine with me. That might not work at another baby lock dealer. You might not get your birthday party. You might not get it. Okay, so just, yeah, warranties are something that's good to keep in mind. And, you know, on those big computerized machines, yeah, be careful about getting in there. That's just not. Well, you paid a lot for your machine, and then you're going to avoid like a hundred dollars I mean, service it, fee or something. The machine. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense, guys. Yeah, the machines I'm thinking about are yeah. upwards of five thousand dollars. I just would take it into the store. You know. Yeah. Okay. Well, you can find us on Instagram at ZD Sewing Studio, and you can email me at Mallory at Sewhere dot com. And thanks for listening. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.